What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. I am your host, Eric, and each week I'm going to rate and review a new movie or TV show that falls within the horror genre. Now, this is a show for horror fans hosted by a horror fan who's just here to share my opinions and experiences with my fellow horror friends in hopes that you may gain something new to watch or not watch, and really just talk about all things related to this beautifully dark and spooky world that we call horror. So if this sounds like a show for you, stick around, we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Eric, your host, and it is time for another Spooky Sunday episode of The Horror Within Me. Um, this week, we are going to be focusing on the lovely, pun intended, holiday of Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is next week in just a couple days on February 14th, and I thought this was a great opportunity to pick a movie from my childhood in the early 2000s to do a review show on, and that movie is the 2001 movie Valentine. Shocker, right? Did you guess that that's what it was going to be? Um, I don't know. I love Valentine's Day. I and it's not because I'm married or or uh, you know do anything crazy. I just really think it's so fucking fun and I love a cliche. I love everything to do with a cliche. I love like my favorite my favorite flowers are roses. I love white roses. I love the 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 hearts. I love the chocolates. I love all the stupid little teddy bears and all the cliche sayings and like those candy hearts with the uh sayings on them. I love everything about Valentine's Day. With that being said, in my home, with me and my my husband and our relationship, we also we we celebrate Valentine's Day, but in that stupid cliche kind of way. With like, we'll get each other flowers or or chocolates or something. I don't expect like expensive, lavish gifts, or we don't go out to dinner. I usually end up cooking something at home. Um, like this year, I'm probably going to um, make my chicken empanadas that he loves and people rave about. But I also found at my local grocery store like a heart shaped cake pan. And I have been recently experimenting with being um, in into homemade baking. So I'm going to try to make a heart shaped, like maybe red velvet cake and strawberry icing. If it doesn't come out, the, the good thing is that I don't take myself too seriously. If you've been listening for this amount of time that I just have fun. And if it comes out like shit, then it comes out like shit. And we know, learn from our mistakes. But yeah, I don't know. What about you guys? Do you like Valentine's Day? Even when I split with my ex, the Valentine's Day, um, first Valentine's Day without my ex, I had a broken hearts party and I bought a bunch of the red uh, like hearts from like a dollar store or party city or whatever. And then I would like, I cut them like to look like broken hearts and tape them around my apartment and found like heartbreak drinks that we had made like themes i thought that was really fun and invited people over that were single like me and we had a good time it was fun i have pictures of it on my social media from back in the day i think this was like 2016 but yeah um i just think it's fun i just don't think that it's worth the stress either though so to i don't know the heterosexual couples or even the the same-sex couples out there that that think that you need to have these like don't put that stress on your partner that you need to get them like these like jewelry or this lavish kind of gift. Times are tough and have been and usually are for most people. And I think it's an unnecessary, unnecessary pressure that we put on partners to to provide these these gifts of affection. Not everyone shows love that way. But this is not a podcast on relationships, but um Look, I lost my train of thought. Again, this is not a podcast on relationships, so I'm not going to get that deep into it. I'm going to get into the reason that we are here, which is the movie Valentine. You know the drill. I've got good feedback. People like the top three best and worst reviews from IMDb, so that is going to be staying and terrifying trivia. So we're going to have fun. We're going to talk some shit. We're going to give a review and a rating, and we're going to go about our fucking day. How's that sound? Sound good? I think so. <laughs> Um, so in horror within me fashion, first thing we're going to do is this week's terrifying trivia question. So 
so simple. I thought it would be fun to switch it up and do another true or false question. So this week's terrifying trivia question is true or false. This movie Valentine that we're discussing is based on a novel. True or false. Stick around to the end of the episode to get the answer. All right. So moving along, we're going to jump right into Valentine. So I go, I go and find this information on IMDb. This information is not hard to find. So it, it, you can just go there to see, check, check my credit, you know, credit your source. <laughs> um, synopsis of Valentine. It goes as, uh, as this. Five women are stalked by an unknown assailant while preparing for Valentine's Day. I, I mean, it's very to the point. Um, very, very to the point. I would like to say before I move on that I have not seen this movie probably since I was a teenager. So this is going off of pure memory, but I couldn't um, not take the opportunity to review this one. And you're probably asking, what about my bloody Valentine? And you know what? I'm gay and the whole minor scene isn't for me. (laughs) And I like more of this one. So anyway, five women are stalked by an unknown assailant while preparing for Valentine's Day. Again, it doesn't get any more you know, specific. That's, that's what you need to know. That's what you need to know really in the synopsis. <laughs> Look at the trailer. If you want to see the rest, it was released on February 2nd, 2001, which is groundhog's day, which is also my sister Heather's birthday. We just talked about that last week. Um, so I never put that together. Maybe I did, but you know, uh, alcohol and drugs and all that stuff in your twenties will really, uh, change your, your memories of the past <laughs> or erase them. Um, it is starring Marley Shelton as Kate Davies, Jessica Capshaw as Dorothy Wheeler, Denise Richards as Paige Prescott, Jessica Caulfield as Lily Voigt, Catherine Heigl as Shelley Fisher, and David Boreanaz as Adam Carr. Now you're probably thinking, some of those names sound very familiar, um, at least to me. So Marley Shelton Right away, what I think about is Officer Judy Hicks from Scream 4 and Scream 5. R.I.P. Judy Hicks. Um, love Marley Shelton. She was obviously in other things as well. But uh, most recently, that's what I think of her is is in um, Scream. But also, I loved her in Never Been Kissed. This is not a horror movie. It's for those – out. you know, I, I watch other movies besides horror movies. And Drew Barrymore is one of my all-time – Favorite actresses. I mean, not even on purpose. You know how some people just, you know, you don't realize that you just, you look back and you're like, damn, I really like this person because I keep watching their movies. That's how I feel about Taylor Swift. Love Taylor Swift. I just, her music just gets me. But Drew Barrymore, I love Drew Barrymore. And I, one of my favorite all time movies ever that's not in the horror genre is Never Been Kissed. Even though when you re watch it now, because I watched it with my husband, because he's never seen it, it's a weird, kind of um vibe when you think about the student teacher kind of thing and that was kind of you know could be creepy it was kind of weird but um still love the movie and will always love the movie but i remember marley shelton was in that as one of the the quote-unquote mean girls um she was actually supposed to be at the horror monster mania that i was supposed to that i went to in august and she had to um cancel at the last minute so that was unfortunate um jessica capshaw automatically Grey's Anatomy. Dr. Arizona, love her in Grey's Anatomy. I miss her and Callie. Just an amazing actress. Um, it's just funny to look back at the the horror movies. So many people have starred and started in horror that were just beginning their craft or, or whatever the case may be. I just thought it was hilarious that she was in this. But we loved Arizona. We were rooting for them and... It would be nice. I love Grey's Anatomy. If you couldn't tell, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Grey's Anatomy fan. As fanatical as it has become, and I'm curious to see how it's going to play out with Meredith leaving. If you also watch Grey's Anatomy, to the listeners at home, uh, Denise Richards. What the fuck happened to Denise Richards? I she was like there, there, there. Boom, gone. Denise Richards is gone. She's not in anything. I don't know what happened to her. Um, she's fun. She was a. Uh, she was a hot, hot girl back in the nineties and two thousands, right? And Catherine Heigl, another Grey's Anatomy, Doctor Izzy Stevens, but not just Grey's Anatomy. You know, she was in Twenty Seven Dresses, 
you know, Grey's Anatomy, uh, so many things. There's that show on Netflix that just did the second season that I started. I think I watched two episodes. I don't remember the name of it, but she had a reputation of being very difficult to work with. And looking back at that now, maybe she was, maybe she also just had certain standards that were above the times, if that makes sense. You know, there were so many things that were going on in Hollywood that we have come to learn about were inappropriate and and not were not correct. And then when people would stand up for themselves, they were labeled as a bitch or as being difficult. And I still am a fan of her. And then lastly, David Boreanaz, if uh Angel and Bones. I never watched Bones, but I, I as a diehard Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, will always be a diehard Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan and Sarah Michelle Geller. But David Boreanaz, he was he was at that time with Buffy and Angel like going on. He had his show at that time. So he was very popular and it was amazing to see him in a in a in a movie instead of just the show. So that is our starring cast in Valentine. And then it's directed by Jamie Blanks, written by Donna Powers and Wayne Powers, produced by Dylan Sellers. It has a runtime of one hour and thirty-six minutes, and under IMDB, the genre is horror mystery thriller and another thing i wanted to add to the podcast is if a movie has a tagline because i think they're kind of fun and valentine's tagline is let's take a guess let me give you like two seconds two love hurts so fucking original i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe that that was the tagline (laughs) being sarcastic so don't don't roll your eyes too hard at me but yeah the tagline love hurts they were like you know what Let's not even try to be any more original. Let's just do, let's just, let's just do that. (laughs) The IMDb rating is a 4.8 out of 10. So not a great rating, which we do see a lot in, especially like slashers and repetitive themed slashers. And then Rotten Tomatoes, I've decided to also split their scores and give you more information from Rotten Tomatoes, because usually I usually just do the one score that I see, but it's not really fair to the, to the content that I'm covering. So Rotten Tomatoes has a tomato meter and an audience score. So the tomato meter is like the critics of them. And then the audience score is like us. So the tomato meter from Rotten Tomatoes is 11% for, for for this movie, but 33% audience score, which is why I think it's important that we also, I also include the audience score because we have seen and I talk to other people that listen to the show and, or talk about reviews. And it's like, there's so many like critical reviews from cr- like professional critics that bash horror movies that we love, right? They just don't get it because they are movie critics and not just horror movie critics. So 11% from a tomato meter, but a 33% audience score. Yes, it's a 20 something percent increase from the audience. So it's a little bit better than the tomato meter, but still not a great score. So two not great scores from Rotten Tomatoes and then a not great score from IMDb. We could see where this is already going and you can just imagine the reviews we're going to we're going to be covering. Um a little bit though before I jump into uh the best and worst reviews what I remember most about Valentine and now this is going to be a spoiler episode because this movie came out in 2001. I mean and I apologize. If you'd never seen it, then stop listening and go watch it and then come back. But what I remember most about Valentine is, um, is, is the cast, right? And David Boreanaz and, and it being, you know, coming around the time of like, there were all the screams. I know she did that summers, like all these different slashers that were reinventing, not, well, not reinventing, but you know, coming back on the scene from the Halloween's Jason's Freddy's things like that. So I was interested to see it because it was a new slasher that came out during my, my era. You know, I'm not watching old movies that were released before I was born or when I was too young to even know what was happening. So I was excited to, to try to see what they were going to offer us. I remember liking the movie, but not being like shocked or overwhelmed. It was just a fun slasher. I I remember thinking um I remember <laughs> my little gay ass I remember loving Dorothy's house at the end like the final um set that takes place like that house was 
fucking massive. I remember wanting to live in that house. I loved the stairs. I went to the basement. Oh my God. Everything about that house was fucking beautiful. And at 2001, I was like 14 going on 15, something like that. 14, 15 years old. This is what I was thinking about. And I wasn't even out of the closet yet. I should have been, but I wasn't. I just loved that house. I'm like, I need that house. Do I have that house now at 36? No, I don't have that house. I don't have that money. So subscribe to the Patreon and get me some money <laughs> um, so I can get that house from Valentine or one like it. But no, I really, um, it's nostalgic. You know, it's fun. I will definitely be trying to find it and add it to my movie collection just for my own nostalgia purposes. But we're going to jump into the best and worst reviews on IMDb. We always start with the best. I tried to split it up a little bit this time. I think I did a 10 out of 10, a 9 out of 10, and a um, a 8 out of 10. Losing my train of thought. So the first review coming in is a, let's see, it is a 10 out of 10, okay, titled Excellent Slasher. Okay, ready? Here we go. It's a colorful slasher movie. That's about it. It has the mystery element that Scream made so popular in slasher movies, but I never care for such things. Figuring out who's the bad guy is not that interesting considering the clues are all misleading anyway. The death scenes were inventive and gory, bringing back memories of 80s horror movies like Friday the 13th. Another nice thing about this movie is that it's hard to pinpoint the surviving girl, unlike in Scream, and I know what you did last summer, where it was obvious. People who don't like slasher movies won't like this movie. As simple as that. I truly enjoyed it, and I plan to watch it again while waiting for more of the same. That's a fucking... I'm sorry, that's a 9 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10. Um, I feel like it started off really bad. Colorful slasher movie, that's about it. it they, it's a mystery element that Scream made popular, but they don't care about it. Like, I'm confused. Like, are you writing a good or bad review? I don't know which one I'm on. Is it good or bad? With the ratings, it's almost hard to do a good and bad, like a great review, right? Um, and I, I'm curious as to why they gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, but they like that you couldn't pinpoint the final girl. Um, I pinpointed her as a teenager. I knew who the final girl was going to be. That, but this was written in June of 2001, a couple months after it was released. I don't know. I th- I thought it was pretty obvious who the final girl was. She had more screen time. She just I just thought, in my opinion, I knew who the final girl was. Um, people who don't like slasher movies won't like this movie. As simple as that. A hundred percent agree. Like it is that simple. Stop going to the movies, or renting movies, or watching movies, or streaming movies, or whatever the fuck it is that we're doing that you aren't interested in. Stop waiting for some movie to change your perception. If you've watched all the slasher movies of the past and it's not your thing, stop watching them. It's okay to not like them, but don't go in and watch them. It's as simple as that. That's what that's to say. If you don't like slasher movies, you're not going to like it. There's other elements of why you might not like it, but if you're a hundred percent, if it's, it's a slasher movie that you're, if you're not into slasher movies and you're going to watch this, you're not going to like it because it's a slasher movie. Moving on to the second review. This one I believe is the nine out of 10. Yes. And it's titled About the Movie Valentine. It was written in 2001 in April. I loved the film. I am a fan of David, but that has nothing to do with my voting or views of the film. I found the movie exciting and the ending was very eerie. The amazing thing was that every murder was different and all were scary and unpleasant, although pages topped them, I think. The way the murderer was disguised and kept secret for so long was also scary and added suspense. I was sure I knew who the killer was by name, but I didn't know who, who, he, who he had become. Those of you who have seen it will know what I mean by that. A truly fab film. Um, that's a great review for this movie. Probably one of the best reviews I've read about this movie. It was very, um, it was very difficult to find like a stellar review for, <laughs> for this movie. I think um, 
I think that this review was better than it deserved. <laughs> I, I just, um, I don't think that it was um, very eerie ending. I, th- I mean, I feel like whoever wrote this was new to these kinds of films and hadn't seen many of them before. So I'm going to allow this. I'm not going to take away their experience. I'm glad that they had the experience that they had. I just wonder if they have a different opinion of the film now after seeing some, you know, continuing on or watching other movies that were like this and revisiting it now. Um, I'm so curious on what they would say about it. Um, I love that they put a truly fab film. It's so 2000 speak. Fab. Love it. Um, I think that the the way the murderer was disguised and kept secret for so long was also scary and added suspense. Again, that's how it is the, in every slasher, right? Like you don't know who it is or, or you don't see them or whatever the case is. So I feel again that this person just hadn't had enough exposure to this kind of movie. And coming in at the last, um, the last movie co- review, that's good from IMDb for Valentine, is titled, Don't Complain. Here we go. Many people complain about this movie, but what is expected from a horror-slash-slasher-type film? If you don't like this film, then you do not like slasher films. For a slasher film, this is very good. The story is good, it keeps you guessing, the actors behave believably, and the plot twist ran up into a nice package when the film goes full circle. Action and slasher films have very little to offer in new ideas, but the mechanics of this film is a model for other films to follow. What interests me about this film is the concepts. This dorky little kid who was picked on at school. Did the events which sent him off to reform school cause his madness, or did everyone stay away from him because he was already crazy? This film uses one of the oldest story plots from the days of the Greeks, which is revenge. And the scary part is how the mind is affected by such evils. Bravo, reviewer. I mean, they like went deep. This is a fan. This is a fan of movies. They are like in the Greek fucking mythology, people. They are deeper than me. I don't know shit about Greek mythology. I know like, is it Greek mythology? Is it even like Zeus, like Greek gods? I don't know. Hercules. I know the Zero to Hero song. Um, Good for you, though. I mean... I love how they like dive deep into it. Um, also, like they said, if you don't like slasher films, you're not going to like it. Again, true. Um, where is it? <sighs> There's a part in here. Um, I agree that action and slasher films have very little to offer and new ideas. And that's what makes things so repetitive. And it's so difficult that we become desensitized to the, to them because of, so many people trying to hurry up and get another one out like they did with the, you know, the Americanized Japanese J horror films. They just started like fucking bashing them, pushing them out that they just became un terrifying. It wasn't scary anymore because now it was just like fantastic. And it wasn't even anything that like their story didn't make sense because they didn't put enough thought into it. We see that a lot with these movies, even if you go all the way back and people are going to give me hate for this. All the way back to Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th films, the acting was fucking not great with a lot of people. And they were disposable characters. There was a lot of stuff. It was a quick cash grab. And I believe they even said that. Some of the creators have said that in the interview. I love them. I love them. But they they, they got better, I think, as they got on. Some of the sequels were crazier. But I think it got better. Um, as opposed to the greats, like the Halloweens, that kind of gotten worse. Because then they did know how to do they did too much so anyway um i i I like this review i thought it was a great review uh i don't agree that it for a slasher film this is very good i wouldn't use the term very good for this film i think uh saying the actors behave believably is also um being generous i think that there was a group of young actors just starting out, possibly not a lot of exposure and a lot of work that their, their craft has become much better later on. And it is 
it is obvious when watching this movie that there was not a desperate attempt to make it like extremely believable it, to me, to them, in my opinion. But that wraps up the three best reviews from IMDb on the movie Valentine. It is time if you could call them best. Like I think they were pretty good. So if they, if you thought they were subpar reviews, we're about to get into the fucking worst reviews for Valentine from IMDb. Are you ready for this? Worst. Um, this is a three out of ten, I believe. Yeah, three out of ten stars. I tried to switch it up. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. Titled, Oh Man! Exclamation point. This is one of the worst horrors I have ever seen. Take absolutely everything you can think of from teen slasher movies, every single cliche, it's all in here. No originality at all. A stupid story, one-dimensional characters played really bad by beautiful actresses, stupid dialogue, predictable scenes, nothing scary. You always know what's going to happen. There's a pale attempt of a twist in the end, but even that can be spotted a mile away. What else? Oh, let's not forget. All the characters manage to somehow be alone sometime when the killer's around. Not even the killer's motivation is plausible. At first, you have the feeling he has a purpose or something. But then he starts killing everyone. Even people who didn't have anything to do with his childhood. And all there's left for you to do is either leave the movie alone or watch it till the end. Amazed of what stupidity can be found in Hollywood. I gave this movie a two, not one, because of Denise Richards, as gorgeous as always, and the soundtrack, which is pretty cool, includes Deftones and Orgy. Okay, so I'm sorry. It was a two out of ten, <laughs> clearly. I've been corrected by the reviewer. Um, did they go in on them? They went in on this movie. Jesus, that was a little rough. Like, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I love the worst reviews more than the best reviews. They are my favorite because people are fucking savage. It's not great that they do it, but people are going to do what they're going to do. And I hope that the people in the movie and the people and the creators that read these reviews don't take it to heart. You're never going to, you're always going to have bad reviews on anything. So I think what we have to learn to do is read these and fucking laugh. You know what I mean? Agree with certain things and laugh and, and, and take what you can, but don't, 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 don't sleep on it. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, it can, does take every cliche from teen slasher movies because that's what the fuck it is. That's what it's going for. I don't know what you thought. Um, predictable scenes, nothing scary. That's, oh, um, I loved the opening scene. Loved it with Catherine Heigl in the morgue. And that shit scared me. Um, I was also 14, but who gives a fuck? I thought it was great. Um, a pale attempt of a twist at the end. I don't think it was a pale attempt. I like the way they put, what else? Question mark. Oh, like they're thinking as they type. What else? What else did I hate about this that I need them to know? Because they're going to read my review. Somebody's going to read this, which you're correct, sir, or won't, or ma'am, or whatever. So anyway, I like the end of it <laughs> where... The only reason they got two stars is because of Den of Denise Richards. Gorgeous as always. I told you. That's probably the only reason they watched this movie was for Denise Richards and got pissed off she got killed in a dumb way. But anyway, <laughs> moving on to the second worst review for the movie Valentine from IMDb. Titled, The Worst Movie I Have Seen in a Cinema. And it goes as follows. Well, the reason for seeing it in the cinema was that it was a sneak preview. Else I would never have seen this terrible teenage slasher movie. I mean, I haven't. I mean, oh, hold on. I mean, haven't we had enough of this yet? Screaming Scary Movie at least did not take themselves serious. The plot sucks, and the acting is the worst I've seen. Only Godzilla can compare, which is also the only movie that competes in being the worst I've seen in the cinema with this one. There are so many plot holes in this story, and the girls are so alike that you don't even know who has been killed and who has not, and you don't care. And the only one of them I knew in advance was Denise, and she was the most talentless actress I have ever seen in this bad excuse for a movie. Say as far away from this movie as possible. Two out of ten. 
That shit was harsh. Um, first of all, I just want to dig a little deeper. How are you getting into sneak previews? Who are you? Who are you, reviewer? How do I get into sneak previews of movies so I can do my reviews? Somebody drop a name in my inbox. Let me know how I get into that. Um, also, what the fuck? Why do we do this? Why do we... Why are we comparing movies that are in different categories and genres? Only Godzilla can compare. <laughs> Godzilla and Valentine? One is a fucking monster movie. And one is a whodunit slasher. I don't think it can Godzilla can compare at all. And don't be coming for that fucking 2000s Godzilla movie. I know he looked different, like an iguana. But let me tell you, when he's dying at the end, and he's just blinking and staring at fucking goddamn Matthew Broderick, my little self, my little teenage self, I shed a tear. I was sad. I don't care if he was a monster. It wasn't his fault. He was, you know, and then we go and fucking kill him. Watch him die. Everyone's staring at him. I broke my fucking heart. Broke my fucking heart. So don't be coming for Godzilla either, bitch. And I'm done with this review. We're going on to the last of the worst reviews for Valentine from IMDb. This one I thought, I don't know. This one just stuck out to me. The title is, There Are Two Ways in Which Films Scare Me. <laughs> and this was written in October of, 20, of 2006. So a couple years, five years later. Excuse me. Are we ready? Here we go. One possible way is that the film is actually a frightening one, and it's so good I get pulled into it. Examples are basically two. The Shining and The Wicker Man, especially The Wicker Man. The other way is exemplified by this film. I'm terrified to think of this movie. It chills me to the core, and every time I think about it, all I can do is wonder with terror. Someone made this film and thought it was good? What drugs were they on? This movie is dire. I cannot think of one to redeem this film. I wish I could give it zero stars. I really do. The only good thing I can say is, at least it's not as bad as Ghost Keeper, and that's not even close to praise. Bad concepts for films I love. They always make me chuckle, or so I thought, until I saw this dire piece of trash. <laughs> I watched this before Ghost Keeper and a few other films I couldn't even laugh at. The ending is the worst bit, though, although I'll leave you discover to discover just why I wanted to hunt down whoever wrote the ending just so I could staple their face to a moving train. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why is there such anger and, like, reading this as an empath? I felt like I felt loneliness for this person. This person seems to be a very lonely individual. I don't know what I've never seen Wicker Man. I heard good things about it, but I don't know what Ghost Keeper is. I'm gonna have to look it up. Somebody tell me what fucking Ghost Keeper is. <laughs> I wish I could give it zero stars. So if you're gonna give it zero stars, just don't fucking review it. I wanna know I wanna know what brought you to this film, right? Um, and the, and the way that it progresses to, I mean, it really took a turn for the dark side when he, he ends it with whoever wrote the movie, I'm looking for you so I can staple your face to a moving train. That's creativity. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen that in a horror movie. Can we fucking get that in a horror movie? I need a visual. I need someone's face stapled to a train, a moving train. I want to see how that's done. Is it like a staple gun? They could shoot and they could just be like my sound effects and just, I don't know. It's, but like, and the words, a dire piece of trash. It took a lot for me to keep it, it together reading that. I mean, Jesus Christ, this person hates this film. Like, hates this film um what drugs were they on probably several sir probably several um and that's okay it was hollywood in 2001 they probably all fucking hit got bumps of cocaine took some shots and were like let's make a fucking slasher movie about valentine's day and fucking went to work 
leave them the fuck alone. They probably definitely were all on drugs. <laughs> Who fucking cares? Um, but bad concepts for films I love. What? But can I? I would have liked to know the films that you do like. Um, I'm curious, but this review just. I I love the reviews that get creative and then like you you can dislike something but like damn this movie incited the thought of you to say that you want to physically staple someone's face to a train like I want to know where where that where that comes from within right you have to have a deep rooted passion right and a creative mind and like whoever this is are you okay now are you in jail? Have you been convicted of a similar crime? Were you one of those people that attacked employees because they asked you to put a mask on during the pandemic? I'm curious because I'm getting those vibes, getting strong vibes. But that concludes the sec- section of top three best and worst reviews from IMDb. Never a dull moment during that part of the show. But we're going to move on to my stuff, the Eric show that we're here for, the Horror Within Me's reviews. So favorite thing from the movie, Valentine, that I liked, <laughs> is going to be weird because I've read so much bad things about it, is I liked the plot twist at the end. Um, I thought it was fun. I I liked that, spoiler alert, the, the real killer set up the killer or set up a victim to be the killer and took the fall and then like lives happily ever after, like got his revenge and probably went on to live his life with his girl and never probably thought of killing anyone ever the fuck again. He did what he wanted to do and probably became, they probably became a fucking rom-com after that, a Hallmark movie moment. (laughs) That was my favorite thing about the movie because usually it's like, you know, Evil succumbs to good and blah, blah, blah. And this one was like, no, he got his revenge and he went about his life. Probably never got caught. He did his research and he got away with it. What I didn't like the most about the movie was the acting. Again, it's, the, it's, it's just, it wasn't, you know, with other movies that had come out that that you have like Scream and I know she did last summer and the, and some of the other ones in the past, it's really hard that when you insert another slasher or kind of movie that's very similar to those, you need to have like your acting on point. And I just feel like it wasn't absolutely terrible, but it just wasn't, it wasn't, you know, my favorite performances from people in a, in a slasher movie. I've seen much better in other movies and that brings me to my rating of valentine i thought for this week's rating we are going to use cupid's arrows it's fun right and i just vision this little like arrow with a heart shaped you know whatever upside down heart to go through that's my cupid's arrow i'm painting a visual for you all And my rating for the 2001 film Valentine is a 4 out of 10 Cupid's Arrows. And my final review is this. Ready? If you are looking for a truly scary and original movie, then this is not the movie for you. Valentine is a fun, silly, and sometimes cringy movie that is another addition to the holiday slashers from the 80s and 90s looking to cash in on on the success of much more popular titles like Halloween. It is a fun movie to watch and even more fun to see so many stars that we have grown to love from other movies and TV shows. I recommend watching this movie with a group of friends for a horror movie night where you only need to half pay attention. And that is my full review for the 2001 film Valentine. And if you want to watch Valentine, if you've never seen it or if you want to find it and watch it again because I've reminded you of this movie... You can find it and rent it on Amazon or YouTube for about $2.99. And that is the end of this week's episode. I hope you all have a great week. And I look forward to sitting down and talking to you all next week. Bye, everybody.
Thanks again for joining me on this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review wherever you listen to your podcast. And for even more Horror Within Me content, visit my link tree at linktr.ee dot ee slash horror within me for links to the website, my Patreon, and all of my social channels to stay up to date on all the spooky stuff that we're doing. So be safe. And until next time, stay spooky.